Okay, welcome to part two of my trig identity series. In part two, I'm going to verify three more trig identities. I will also sort of revisit some of the guidelines for verifying these identities, and uh, we'll go from there. I think part three will be the most challenging identities yet. So part two right here, three examples that are fairly simple still. As I mentioned in part one, right, as we verify what that means is we have to show that this whole left-hand side is exactly the same as this right-hand side. So this is kind of different, it's much different than solving regular equations because we can't just like divide both sides by something and kind of move stuff over. We can't subtract by both sides by cosine squared x because we don't know that this is equal yet. All right, the directions are going to say verify. In other words, show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So rather than the kind of like moving stuff over the equal sign, we have to stick with one side at a time. And the rules for that, some of the guidelines for that, are to, number one, start with the more complicated side first and try to get that whole side to equal the left or the other side. So in other words, this side visually looks more complicated. So I'm going to try to get that side to be cosine squared x somehow. Number two, look for opportunities to use algebra to simplify. We're going to factor a lot. We're going to add fractions. We're going to square binomials. We're going to take difference of squares. If it's a cubes, we're going to do distributive property. All sorts of crazy stuff. So you have to be really good at algebra. Number three, look for opportunities to use the identities that are really simple. In other words, don't go right to the more complicated ones, like double angle formula and half angle formula and all that crazy stuff. A lot of times your verifications can be done by just using your basic reciprocal identities and Pythagorean identities and maybe even odd even. Number four, when all else seems to fail, turn all of your trig functions to sines and cosines. So take tangent and make it sine over a cosine. Take cotangent and make it cosine over sine. Take secant and make it one over cosine. Take cosecant and make it one over sine. You don't want to do that first, that's why I put it down in number four, but you definitely want to try that if you know, you're kind of stuck. And number five, don't give up. Right? Always try something. Make sure you're using a pencil so in case you make a mistake you can just erase it and start over. You know, A lot of these verifications can be done a number of different ways and maybe your way is different than mine. So uh, you know, if you make a mistake you, you kind of erase it and start over. But you know, if I do this verification in two steps and you do it in three, that's not a huge deal as long as your math is great. Ideally you want to do them in as few steps as possible provided that you don't skip any steps. But let's get started. All right, I've got my basic identities here on my screen. They're ready to go. All right, I know that 1 over sine is cosecant. 1 over cosine is secant. 1 over tangent is cotangent. I know the tangent is sine over cosine. I've got my odd even identities here. I got my really important Pythagorean ones down here too. We'll use those a lot. So let's get started. So my job is, of course, to make this left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So I need to change this left-hand side. So I'm going to just foil these. I'm going to distribute this binomial into this binomial. So I'm going to go first times first. I'm going to go outside times outside. I'm going to go inside times inside. And I'm going to go last times last. All right. And notice when I multiply sine x times sine x, I get sine squared x. And you put the 2 right in there. It's kind of a just a sort of a conventional way of writing that. Well, this is kind of cool because I have a plus sine x and a minus sine x. They'll cancel out. 1 minus sine squared x does that equal cosine squared x? Well, not necessarily. I mean, if I look at my my trig function or my trig identities rather, if I go back to this slide, I have one that involves sine squared and cosine squared and one, but it's not really in that same order. So what I need to do is think about is that thing equal to cosine squared x? Well, it is. If we go back to our regular Pythagorean identity and just solve it for cosine. So now we can get this over because we know it's true. 
So we can subtract sine squared x from both sides. And you see that 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. So I can make that substitution right now. So there you go, a little bit of algebra and one Pythagorean identity, and I have my verification complete. Let's move on. Number two, sine squared of t over tangent squared of t. I need to get that equal to cosine squared of t. Well, this is the more complicated side. I'm going to start there. I need to change that to cosine squared of t. So maybe I'll take my denominator and make it into sines and cosines. All right, if you recall, tangent is equal to sine divided by cosine. So I'll make that change right now. All right, now I have a fraction, or have a, I have a, a term divided by a fraction. So sine squared t divided by sine squared t over cosine squared t. Well, when I divide fractions, sometimes if I'm confused, I just write them horizontally, and then I keep it, switch it, and flip it. So I flip this over. In other words, I keep this exactly the same. I f change this to multiplication, and I flip it over. Keep it, switch it, flip it. Because dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. OK, so now this, is a frac this has a denominator of 1. If I multiply these fractions together, just multiply numerators. So sine squared t times cosine squared t all over sine squared t. And I think it's just shaping up, right? I see that I have sine squares on top and bottom. They cancel out, and I am finished. Let's move on. Last one for this video. Oh, let's see. I've got two fairly complicated looking sides. I don't. It's not particularly clear to me which side I need to change to look like the other. So what I might do is look at this left hand side and I notice that if I change the left hand side to look like the right hand side I've got to get rid of the cosine so can I change that to something with a sign in it because the right hand side only has a sign in it so I, look, I go back to my my identity Pythagorean identity the very basic one and if I sign, if I again solve that for cosine squared beta, I get one minus sine squared beta. So I'll make that change. I'll bring the other one right down. I just brought that straight down. So the only thing I did there was I said this is equal to this. All right. So let's simplify. I have one minus sine squared beta minus another sine squared beta, though that's minus two sine squared beta. Hey, what do you know? I'm finished. So that was really easy, provided that you saw that the trick was to use Pythagorean identities. So we're finished. That concludes part two. In part three, I'm going to do three that are a little bit more complicated. So I look forward to that. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.